I've seen houses and I've seen homes, but never have I seen a place that reminded me of Tipu Sultan's palace. And I'm not just talking about the location or the size of the property. What I'm hinting is the art decor pieces and the collection of things that they have in that house. Want to know what I'm talking about? But those of you who have visited Kavita's house know better. Hers is the large bungalow on St. Mary's Road and everything in her property has a story to say, starting from this intricately carved black gate. This 1000 kg gate was custom made in Indore and beyond it is a sprawling lawn and a spacious car park. A bronze statue of Lord Ganesha and a marble figurine are but a mere glimpse into the grandeur that awaits. The living area has an antique finish with these elaborately carved sofa sets matching Venetian chandeliers and the Persian carpet. The etchings on the glass door, which separates the living from the corridor, is inspired by the carvings on the sofa. Silverware with an antique finish sourced from Jaipur is also part of the decor. A marble statue sourced from Makrana, which has the face of a lady hastily visible through a delicate marble wheel, is sure to draw a lot of attention. But the room was planned keeping in mind the family's large ivory collection. And honestly, what a collection it was! We had a person who used to get it for us from Kerala and uh, we used to sit for hours, my mother-in-law basically, it's her collection and I learned it from her. We used to sit for hours and look into the part of it, whether it's ivory or camel bone and uh, we could see the veins of the tusk and uh, that's how we know camel bone doesn't have any, bones don't have veins. That's how we could find out and then we would for cleaning part, I use toothpaste and toothbrush and then wash, give it a wash and with a soft cloth, wipe it and put it off. It has to be done once in three months or six months and now ivory is not available. We have it all declared in the forest department. The second half of their collection is housed in the dining area and there is a sliding door which separates the corridor from the dining. The largest piece in their collection is placed here and it is such a wonder to look at the intricate detailing that has gone into the making of this Ganesha. Apart from the larger picture, one can see all other versions of Lord Ganesha carved into the base of the platform. The same pattern of interior decoration is repeated in this room and the hand-carved marble wash basin completes the room. The guest bedroom has a bed that is built in to suit the room. It fits in so beautifully that one finds it hard to imagine the room without this bed. Ample storage space is also provided in this room. The kitchen is also on the first floor. It is large and spacious and it follows the black and white theme. A flight of broad wooden steps lead to the first floor. The first floor has a contemporary look and the TV room has a 52-inch LCD TV and the home theatre system all in place. Czechoslovak cut glass vases line the shelves here and this particular piece was bought after the family won 1000 Australian dollars in a casino in Sydney. The centre table has a glass finish to match the items on display and the concealed lighting and the LED lights add to the charm of the room. It's a 40 year old property, 30 years down the line my father-in-law had purchased it and 10 years back I had redone the entire place, renovated it according to our basic requirements. We redid the entire flooring, it was those antique floorings and then I wanted marble flooring and a few rooms we shifted, replaced the rooms by according to Vastu since we have ivory. Ivory goes very well with traditional furniture, so we took that into consideration. 
and three years back we redid again the interiors I wanted a contemporary look starting from the staircase we started giving a contemporary touch the home theater came into it and my sit out so my both the floors have one has a traditional look and the other has a contemporary look A sliding door separates the living space from the bedroom and this room has a mix of modernity and the ethnic. While the bed is a family heirloom, the drapes have a more contemporary finish. And the private living space outside the bedroom has furnishing that matches with these drapes. The living opens out into a patio and a walk-in closet. Beyond this is the bath and even this has a modern finish. Kavita's father-in-law's room is a simple space where he has put up pictures of his family. The bath attached to the room houses some of the art pieces that are over 20 years old. As it is, I was vaccinated by the outhouse, which of course I have converted it into a school. The outhouse was beautifully laid and a uh, very calm and quiet place. Like in this house, the kitchen was used. Everything, somehow I had a mental satisfaction of staying and living into this house. I called my wife after I purchased, after six months, nobody knew that I have purchased a house like. But when they came, they were also vaccinated and said, well, if it is our own house, we'll move it down from Calcutta to Chennai. The children's bedroom are in shades of black and red. The flooring is done in tiles that match the wooden walls and the bath also follows the same color scheme. It has anti-slippery pebble tiles for the children's safety. Bedroom is awesome. I have an individual bed. I keep my toys below my bed. I wanted my mother to make space for my medals and trophies. my room and my bed. I love the place where I could play with my friends. I love cycling in my garden. I love my room. Now don't you agree that house reminded me so much of a marble palace but what I like the most about the house is the fact that it has adapted itself to the present use and it's modern and contemporary and antique looking all at the same time. I think the beauty is just timeless. Now let's take a quick break but there's more on the other side.